Welcome to another lively edition of the deadly experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Rick Adams, your host and producer. Well, as we've been trying to show our viewers across the world now with the YouTube channel, Rick Adams Uncensored, The Deadly Experiment. Uh, we're in rough shape politically, economically. We're in rough shape in America, most of all. And as it used to be said of many, as goes the nation, goes the world. Well, no question about it, the whole world is in very bad shape. Economically, militarily, politically, academically, media corruption is everywhere. Most important, religiously. We do hear signs and we do hear voices calling for the whole world to come together in an ecumenical faith enterprise that the Vatican has said so, many of the Protestant churches have said so, Hindu even many of the Muslims have come out and said we should coalesce so that we can pray for peace. And um, as we see in the scriptures, there is no peace. Well, the Bible says, as the, as the prophet said, peace, peace, they will cry, but there shall be no peace because the Prince of Peace has not returned to the earth to bring true peace. You know, peace without freedom is not a peace. As we've seen the military occupation taking place in cities like Manchester following a totally false flag attack on the people of Manchester under the prime ministership of Theresa May, we see a lockdown. We see an extended period of time when the military are patrolling the streets and then allowing freedom to continue to flourish until the next one and until the next one. And guess what? Pretty soon the people are already accustomed to having a police and military presence on the streets. Here in Rhode Island, we've had helicopters, military exercises of the Rhode Island Army National Guard taking place so that it too can be prepared in the event of some attack on our nation and our state. And guess what? When that happens, and I'm sure it's going to happen with economic collapse, and definitely there is going to happen to be an economic collapse Collapse. There will also be a cyber attack not coming necessarily from Russia or from Syria or from Iran, but it will be an attack nonetheless on our nation that will shut down everything. All communications can be shut down at the flip of a hat. All banks could be closed overnight. You may wake up tomorrow morning and find that you have a totally different world on your hands. And it's all planned. It's all pre-scripted. By whom? Well, Bible tells us by Satan himself. He wants the world under his control, folks. He wants everybody to be safe. And his catchword is peace and what? Safety. And the Bible tells us, for when they in those days shall say peace and safety, just when Satan makes his grand appearance and his children are ruling from Jerusalem, when they shall say peace and safety, then cometh sudden destruction upon them like travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape the wrath of God. Because the real Jesus will take him down. The real Jesus is coming, but first the fake Jesus is coming to bring peace and safety. Don't we hear that all the time? Both sides of the aisle, the Republicans, the Democrats following these attacks on people with all kinds of assault weapons, deranged Bernie Sanders supporters, we're told, attacking the Republicans who had no protection at that baseball practice session. They just happened to be there with the majority whip, uh, Mr. Scalise, in the House. And if it weren't for two Capitol Hill police officers and a couple of others, Others, boy, it could have been a whole different ball game. It was a miracle, we're told. A miracle that just happened to happen the way it happened, with no protection and a wild shooter who couldn't hit <laughs> at the side of a barn from 10 feet away, although a couple of injuries, serious injuries, had been reported. The point of the matter is it worked. People are fearful now more than ever. Congress is fearful now more than ever. America is going through a divide, a new civil war this summer. We expect to see many more incidents 
real incidents of violence, not staged events, but incidents like we've seen at Berkeley, UCLA, and other hotbeds of radicalism. We're meeting what uh, Stephen Bannon would say his hero, uh, Alexander Dugin in Russia, predicted a number of years ago that America would divide. America would be subjugated in 10 regional areas of the country, and there would be a civil war spilling over over into the streets. Troops would have to occupy America's streets and they would have to take control and keep us what? Safe. Now, before we get into our video presentations today, let me ask you a question. What would you do if you woke up tomorrow morning or even tonight when you least expected it and you heard that Al Qaeda or ISIS or some other group just managed to be able to pull down all of the ties that keep the bond markets going, to keep the stock market going. There were glitches everywhere. Everything collapsed. All of your pensions are tied up in derivatives worldwide. And guess what? You could not get access to your money. What do you think you would do? I know what the president would do. I know what the Congress would do. They would do what they were going to do in 2008, a complete shutdown of the economy. But then they got what they wanted, that is the banksters. The criminal elite bankster gangster Rothschilds got exactly what they wanted. Goldman Sachs and a host of others. Now we see Goldman Sachs people ran the Hillary campaign. We see it in James Comey, former director of the FBI. We see it in the Trump campaign. We see people like Steven Mnuchin, head of the Treasury. Jack Lew is gone, and there goes, well, I won't say it, but there goes another one of the tribe. Friends, all of the economic cards right now are locked and loaded. At the flip of the hat, everything you think you have access to in your bank account could be and will be at some point shut down. It could be any time. Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared for what will follow? What will follow when anarchy breaks out? What will follow when people cannot get money to buy food, to buy the necessities of life? What do you think is going to happen? We're going to have churches singing in the streets. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get down and let's salute God. No, you're going to have martial law. Now, I know that sounds awfully conspiracy oriented, but you know what? History will attest to that fact, won't it? It happened before all over the world, and it happened in America. For Japanese Americans, when America went to war against Japan and Germany, through the axis of Roosevelt, who deliberately and intentionally allowed Pearl Harbor to be attacked, as we have shown, with Mr. Kimmel, Thomas K. Kimmel, eldest living grandson of Admiral Kimmel, whose associate, um, uh, Mr. Short, uh, Walter Short, the Secretary uh, of the Army, uh, and not Secretary, but he was uh, the Army General in charge, uh, were set up for Pearl Harbor. They were solely blamed for what happened, despite the fact that Roosevelt did it. Knowingly, and completely, the documentation now leaves no doubt to get us into a bloody worldwide war from which we have never recovered financially, economically, politically, and in terms of our sovereignty. So what happened? Japanese Americans were herded into camps. Yes, for their own good, for their own protection. But it can't happen here. You know it can't happen here. Well, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It will happen here. Sooner than you think, all of these things will happen across the world when global banking comes to a halt. Let me tell you, Rhode Island is going to get what it so roundly deserves. It's not about Gina Rahimondo or Stephen Pryor or Mr. Goldenstein or uh, Mr. Glazer who walked away with cash and walked away and still walking away with taxpayers' dollars while uh, the consummate goy Betsy Wall gets herself axed from Commerce Corps. No, it's much more than that. Rhode Island cast ladies and gentlemen, cast its stone in the water years ago. We went through a revolution and we denied God himself up above. I remember when there was a prayer being held in the 1980s at Nathan Bishop Junior High School. 
And a minister, a Protestant uh, Baptist minister, gave the um, invocation. And he prayed in the name of Jesus. And it wasn't two moments later that a Weisman, Deborah Weisman, protested and said she did not believe in Jesus. And she was offended by the very thought of a prayer in Jesus' name. Well, that got the ball rolling. So then they stationed a rabbi in a position so that they could then have him pray. And guess what? That was the beginning of a lawsuit in federal court. And the judge ruled that you could no longer say a prayer, graduation exercises. They spit in the face of Christ. They spit in the face of God. And now we go from that episode to yet another. As a matter of fact, in the year of like uh, 2007 or 8, thereabouts, in Providence, right at Roger Williams Park, of all places, somebody happened to notice there was a statute of the Ten Commandments placed in a very basic, innocuous place. It wasn't even a huge display of the Ten Commandments. And one of the councilmen, his name was Joshua Fenton, protested and said we should take it down. And you know what? Without much fanfare, it too was removed from its position of stature. Then we had the case called the Prayer Banner case in Cranston High School, where a plaque that was donated from a class to the class at that Cranston High School was then questioned and challenged in court. And it, too, went to federal court. I believe it was Judge Magoo or Mr. Magoo or Ligur or something like that. And uh, as memory would, uh, would uh, stir it up again, uh, my recollection is that indeed it was litigated and everybody awaited the federal judge's decision that uh, would go either way. And sure enough, the way was no. Yet, we cannot have that plaque in a school, even though it was not a prayer. It was a donation to the class. That came down. Now, ever since then, with the enactment of gay marriage in America, as it's called, uh, illegally, through the courts, nevertheless, the atmosphere has changed dramatically. We are now suffering an incredible blowback. And God tells us in the book of Leviticus to his people, in chapter 26, he tells them, when you no longer obey my commandments and you no longer recognize me, instead you throw me out the door and you embrace idols, you are going to have nothing but trouble. And I'm going to see to it that you will be cursed and you will have plagues and you will have violence and you will have economic depravity and you will have destruction and you will have bickering and arguing and you will have strife. Uh, does that ring a bell, folks? Sure does. Providence rejected its founder, his message, and the founding documents of our nation, guaranteeing freedom of religion. Not freedom from, but freedom of religion, and guaranteeing state sovereignty over the federal government in areas where the federal government has no right to be. That was thrown out by the courts years ago in the Shemp decisions. It came up from Pennsylvania. And it was the Jewish American Congress and others that were heavily involved in litigating in those two cases, prayer and Bible reading in the schools. Now we've reaped what we have sown. America is in big trouble. Rhode Island is in big trouble. Financial trouble is nothing compared to what is going to befall us. In the days ahead, you will see a lot of violence, a lot of terror, real terror, as well as staged events. But you will see a loss of freedom because God said it's going to happen. You're also going to see a Russian invasion into America slash Israel. All of these hearings, all of these accusations against Trump and so forth are all leading up to an inevitable conflict with Russia. Friends, the Bible says so. It says so in Ezekiel chapter 38, 39, that America itself, true Israel, would be invaded by the kings of the north and taking with them kings of the east. And that includes Russia, Rush, Russia, and Persia, Iran. Cards are lined up. We're witnessing it today. Right now, let's go to our video presentations and we'll come back with a quick word of close. The simple message is the economy is doing well. Um, 
We have confidence in the robustness of the economy and its resilience to shocks. Um, it's performed well over the last several years. Uh, we have created since the trough in employment after the financial crisis around 16 million jobs. The unemployment rate has moved way down and um, many more people uh, feel optimistic about their prospects. The simple message is the economy is doing well. Today, millions of Americans say that they believe that the United States is on the verge of a major economic collapse and will soon be entering another Great Depression. But only a small percentage of those same people are prepared for that to happen. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. The U.S. stock market is going to crash or the dollar is going to crash. The global situation has created an environment for financial panic. It's the biggest bubble I've seen in history, and now we have a bigger stock bubble by far than ever, larger real estate bubbles in many cities, and, and extreme around the world. We have the worst financial recovery in 65 years. In the last eight years, the past administration has put on more new debt than nearly all of the other presidents combined. There are some dire predictions that, you know, next year, or say a year, 18 months, we have something arriving worse than uh, 2008 and 2009. The downturn is, is much worse. It's not a question of uh, will that happen, it's just a question of when. And the worst scenario for that would be things like Zimbabwe and Venezuela. The sad truth is that the vast majority of Americans would last little more than a month on what they have stored up in their homes. Most of us are so used to running out to the supermarket or to Walmart for whatever we need that we never even stop to consider what would happen if suddenly we were not able to do that. Already the US economy is starting to stumble about like a drunken frat boy. When the economic collapse occurs it will happen quickly, no one will predict it, that's because the signs of imminent collapse are difficult to see. For example, the US economy nearly collapsed on September 17, 2008. That's the day panicked investors withdrew a record $140 billion from money market accounts. That's where businesses keep the cash to fund day-to-day -day operations. If withdrawals had gone on for even a week, the entire economy would have halted. If the US economy collapses, you will not have access to credit. Banks will close. That means high demand and low supply of food, gas and other necessities. If the collapse affects local governments and utilities, then water and electricity will no longer be available. As people panic, self-defense becomes more important. When that happens, things are going to get desperate for many people. And desperate people are known to do desperate things. Expect several suicides. Expect several to turn to violent crime. And that includes street gangs and those who already employed as career criminals. With police spread thin and short-handed, street gangs and career criminals are about to have a heyday taking whatever they want from whoever they can. All it would take for the entire US to resemble New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina would be for a major war, a terror attack, a deadly pandemic or a massive natural disaster to strike at just the right time to push the teetering US economy over the edge. So just how would you survive if you suddenly could not rely on the huge international corporate giants to feed clothe and supply you and your family. Do you have a plan? Unless you already live in a cave or you are a complete and total mindless follower of the establishment media, you should be able to see very clearly that our society is more vulnerable now than it has ever been. Unprecedented number of large earthquakes around the world and volcanoes all over the globe are awakening. You could just take a look at what happened to Haiti and in Iceland to see how devastating a natural disaster can be. Not only that, but we have a world that is full of lunatics in positions of power. And if one of them decides to set off a nuclear, chemical or biological weapon in a major city, it could paralyze an entire region. 
war could erupt in the Middle East at literally any moment. And if it does, the price of oil would double or triple at least. And there is a possibility that much of the entire world could be drawn into this conflict. Scientists tell us that a massive high altitude EMP blast could send large portions of the United States back to the Stone Age in an instant. In addition, there is a constant threat that the outbreak of a major viral pandemic, such as what happened with the 1918 Spanish flu, could kill tens of millions of people around the globe and paralyze the economies of the world. But even without all that, the truth is that the US economy is going to collapse. So just think of what will happen if one or more of those things does happen on top of all the economic problems that we are having. Are you prepared? If the job of government is to reassure a nervous public when things are difficult, then this is what the response looks like after Manchester. Around a thousand soldiers to start with, just in London. But more will follow, and it marks a big change in policing and in crisis response. Just move back there, please, sir. Troops were deployed during the London Olympics, when the security company G4S failed in its remit to provide enough security staff, but the soldiers were unarmed. There have been occasional incidents, as in 2003, when the then Prime Minister Tony Blair deployed armoured vehicles around London's main airport, but that was a specific location and a specific threat to bring down a plane. But now, says the government, the threat is more widespread due to the emergence of ISIL and its methods. Daesh or ISIS really want to commit these terrorist, act, these terrorist acts and are constantly trying to radicalise people, British-born people, to make sure that they do take up arms against us. A cursory look around a central London street demonstrates what the government is worried about. Any of these places might be at risk. It's impossible to guard everything. In Manchester, it was children at a concert. The fear among the security services is that it could just as well be anywhere where families gather or large crowds of people. And so the logic is to put soldiers at the obvious targets, freeing up the police to be much more mobile. But will it work? In France, where the state of emergency is continually extended, troops are visible everywhere. But it's patently failed to stop attacks and on occasion soldiers themselves have been the targets. Still, with summer approaching, there will be major sporting, music and arts festivals in London and around the country. That is likely to be where the soldiers will be placed. There will be major events taking place in London. Chelsea Flower Show taking place now, the FA Cup final this weekend, uh, the Rugby Premiership final this weekend, and other events over the course of the next few days and weeks. Our security experts are advising the organisers and the host how to make sure those events are done as safely as possible. People will see additional police officers, people will see additional armed officers, and people may well see military personnel at some of these events. The sight of heavily armed police at transport hubs and elsewhere has become something people in London in particular have got used to. The government promises soldiers will only be visible in certain places and for a limited period. But that, of course, depends on events. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, London. shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army but he shall not stand for they shall forecast devices against him yea they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him and his army shall overflow and many shall fall down slain
and both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits, and return to his own land. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. I want to thank Christian God is the one and only true living God, the creator of heaven and the universe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now you've seen enough, I think, to be almost indigestible, huh? <laughs> well, folks, the reality is right out of the Word of God. When God says something's going to happen, and when it's going to happen, it happens. You can count on that, and it's going to happen. We now can see what we predicted some time ago coming to pass with the Russiagate whole episode about Trump and about Kushner and all of the others, including Pence and all of the deals that have been made supposedly with Russian contacts was all scripted when Mr. Trump was brought into office. Prescripted to be sure. Why? Because we're seeing the evidence of it now. Where it will lead is going to lead to war. It's going going to be a quick decision. It's going to be something that will come out of the clear blue. And just like Japan in World War II, we will be hit. It will be blamed on them. But meanwhile, the synagogue of Satan that Jesus denounced in Jerusalem controls both the economic, it controls the worldwide political influence, as well as the ability to, con <coughs> excuse me, to set up for destruction, for worldwide destruction of the banking, economic, and political system that is through the internet, through cyber control and cyber hacking. You just stay tuned. You watch it unfold. It is coming. It will take place. And it's going to happen when you least expect it. What will follow that will be a whole new world economic and political beast system spoken of in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel. Read it in chapter 11 of the book of Daniel, and then you'll understand that we're going to have a whole new banking system, and you're going to be taking the mark of Cain, whether you like it or not, in order to buy or sell. And that is not a visible mark. It means in the head, doing the work of this Judaic synagogue of Satan, Kenite beast system. Be prepared, those of you who are God's elect, know the times that we live in and know the signs of those times. We're just about out of time. Folks, thank you all for watching The Deadly Experiment. God willing, we have special programs coming up that will definitely elucidate you. Until then, God bless. Rick Adams saying, Yahweh bless his elect. <laughs>